Everyone from the lobby has been admitted to the meeting and we are now recording. Okay, thank you, Heidi. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name's David Crofts and I'm the chair of the Northern Beaches Local Planning Panel. Um, I'll just, before we start the official proceedings, I'll just uh, provide an introduction as to the role of the panel and a bit of background to provide some context to those of you who have never attended a panel meeting before. Um, that in 2018, which now seems quite a few years ago, um, the state government made local planning panels mandatory for all Sydney councils as well as Wollongong City Council. The panels aim to provide an increased level of accountability and ensure independent oversight leads to better planning outcomes. And the way it does that is that the panel is comprised of a number of um, independent experts as well as a community representative. The functions of the panels are, are that it deals with certain referred matters. We don't deal with all DAs. Most DAs are dealt with by delegated authority um, by the council officers and, and some go out through other streams to the regional planning panel and the like. But our role is to provide that independent and open forum for interested people and groups to hear and make submissions about development proposals referred for determination. We consider and determine development applications, application modifications and reviews of applications. We can also provide recommendations to council on any referred planning proposals, which are often colloquially called rezonings and any other development matter that may be referred to the panel. There's some statutory rules that were set out by the state government that uh, govern our panel's operation, and that includes a code of conduct and operational procedures. The way the system works is that an application is lodged by uh, the proponent um, as normal. Council officers assess the development application and then they make a report to the local planning panel. As part of the council office assessment process, they um, speak to other specialist officers within the council um, and also externally, if necessary, look at the documentation that's provided to them, as well as any submissions that come from the community. When the report comes to the local planning panel, that includes really a summary of the assessment that the council officers have undertaken um, as well as a recommendation from the council officers. We also uh, receive a host of supporting information, whether that's um, information from objectors, um, any uh, more detailed plans and specialist studies done by the applicant and so on. So we're fairly well informed. Um, we also, where possible, do a site inspection and those site inspections are done from uh, the public realm, that is the street or some sort of public space rather than entering public property, private property, I might add. Now, one of the important things to note is that we're not rule makers. We administer rules, so we don't set policy, but we work within the legal framework and policy set by council, the state government and the courts through legal precedent and the like. The panel itself consists of four members, myself as chairperson, um, a community member, and, and today the community member is Andrew Doherty. Um, welcome, Andrew. And two independent expert members, and those independent experts um, have uh, been um, selected off a short list produced by um, the state government after calling for expressions of interest for people with expertise. And uh, today's um, experts uh, are David Epstein and also Heather Hi, Wilton. Welcome, David and Heather. Um, the community member is a representative of the local community, um, but they don't need to be an expert in any particular field, but often they are. Um, the meeting format is that we've done our inspections, we hold a public panel meeting, which is what we're doing now. We then go into closed panel to deliberate and make a decision or determination on a particular development proposal. And then we, a public announcement's made by the council, normally a few days afterward. Um, I think I've pretty well covered or everything other than 
Um, the public meeting is an opportunity to make an oral submission. They're not a place for debate or for to or fro discussion between the applicant and objectors. They're an opportunity for the panel to become more informed and to ask questions so that we can make better decisions. These public meetings are video and audio recorded as well as being live stream and the audio recordings and the video um, is published on Council's website as soon as that can be technically done. I think that's pretty well all by way of background, so I hope that helps you understand who we are and what we're all doing here and how the show works. So I'll now move on to the formal meeting. Uh, we're welcome to the Northern Beaches Planning Panel um, of the Wednesday, the 21st of June. Um, we have a number of items. Uh, however, only one of those items, those public items, has um, speakers registered, and um, that relates to 26 Eltham Street, Beacon Hill. And I assume everyone that's come online probably has come online in relation to that. But if I can ask you to hold your horses just for a second, some more procedural things I need to do. Firstly, most importantly, I'd like to acknowledge country. As a sign of respect, the Northern Beaches Local Planning Panel acknowledges the traditional custodians of the lands upon which we gather and pay respect to elders past, present and emerging. And I note that since we're meeting online, you're probably located in the lands of many of the different First um, Nations people. Uh, I haven't received any apologies, and uh, but I have received declarations of interest from all the panel members, and um, no member has indicated um, that there's a conflict of interest in relation to this matter. Uh, the minutes of the previous meeting, which was held on the 7th of June, are included in the um, published papers for this meeting. And um, I'd just like to note that they were adopted by the chairperson to that meeting and have been posted on Council's website. Which now brings us to the first um, substantive item today, which is DA 2022-1874. 26 Eltham Street, Brecon Hill, which is uh, alterations and additions to a dwelling house. The reason why it's been referred to the panelling panel in this case is it's been the subject of 10 or more unique submissions by way of objection. Um, as I mentioned, there's a report from the council officers that's been provided. And those of you, if you've got the PDF available, um, it's on page six onwards. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to check that I've got um, the speakers that we've got registered. Dan Benefit. Bennett, I can see you online. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Um, Greg Barr-Jones. Yes, I'm here. Oh, Thank good. You. Excellent. Nicole Lennon. Excellent. Thank you, Nicole. Um, Heidi, there's no one else that's registered. They are the three objectors registered to speak. Great, thank you. And for the applicant, um, Greg Doberson, if I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yeah, Brett, thank you. Joanne Oakley. Oh, yes, yes, oh, you're next to in the same room. <laughs> okay. Um, um, Nikki Moat, is it? Yep, thank you, Nikki. And Natalie Nolan. Yes. Right. Okay, and there's no one else that you're aware of that's registered from the applicant, Heidi? No, they're just the four that you've Excellent. mentioned. Okay, normally the process is um, that uh, I'll ask the objectors to make a presentation and then the applicant mm -hmm. to make a presentation if they wish and some responses. Then I'll open it for panel members to uh, ask any questions or seek clarification. The reason why I do it that way is that it, it, it saves us um, doing things twice and often some questions are answered on the way through. So it just makes the meeting um, more efficient and more informative to everyone. Um, in making your presentation, can I ask you that you try and limit your presentation to a maximum of three minutes? And my advice to you is to focus on um, what you think are the most important issues. 
Uh, we already have had have an opportunity to read all the submissions, so we know what's in them. There's no need to read a submission in its entirety, but it's your opportunity to get the message across to us. So focusing on the big issues is the best way to do that. So to start off, um, first person on my list is Dan Bennett. Dan, we're in your hands. Thank you. Thank you very much. All righty, I'll get through this pretty quickly. Um, look, I'd like to express our support for reasonable development um, and commend skillful and respectful design. Unfortunately, the compromises made with 26 Altham design are basic at most and certainly inadequate, and they fail to address the concerns raised by the objectors. For us, the proposed development would result in severe view loss from all north rooms <clears throat> and some uh, sorry and would also um, impact the long reef uh, area that we're looking at including the lounge area where we uh, lose sight of narrabeen lagoon and the bagola headland uh, we're already at two levels instead we're left with an overbearing structure um, that benefits the neighbors at the cost of our panoramic view okay it seems that the original design was deliberately submitted as an overdevelopment with the possibility of being approved if supported Alternatively, if objections were raised, the architect could revise the design and comply with regulations and gain merit consideration. However, the revised design still fails to address the severe view loss and other non-compliant aspects. Furthermore, after the feedback from the assessing officer, the revised submission resulted in 14 new objections, indicating varying degrees of concern that have been inadequately addressed Despite this, the assessor's report claims that no matters have arisen that justify refusal in the interest of the public, which is clearly inaccurate. Additionally, the use of merit consideration by the assessor appears to have been an overuse of power to justify their non-compliance without providing detailed justifications. It undermines the intended purpose of the merit consideration process. And some key points that I wanted to bring to bear from the assessor's report were wall height, non-compliant by 11.1%. Merit consideration was given, proposal supported. Side boundary envelope, non-compliant by 65%. Merit consideration given, proposal supported. Front boundary setback, non-compliant by 36.9%. Merit consideration given, proposal supported. Landscaping, 7.5% non-compliant. Merit consideration given, proposal is supported. Views, merit consideration given, proposal is supported. Another example of inadequate reasoning is where the assessor states portions of the development exceed the maximum wall height, but would comply if measured from extrapolated ground levels. This is an inaccurate justification since the measurement should be based on existing ground levels, which is the abiding rule. To illustrate the impact of the proposed development, our property originally designed in the 1960s to have north-facing views of the Baha Temple, Narrabeen Lake, Bilgola Headland, Long Reef and surrounding bushland. The proposed development would devastate these views, contrary to the assessor's claim that this development would not unreasonably impact adjacent properties. In conclusion, the assessment lacks sound and concise grounds for approval and contains numerous inconsistencies. I urge you to consider the genuine concerns raised by the objectors. The current design fails to, uh, to address severe view loss and the merit consideration process seems to be misused. We request a thorough review of the proposal and fair consideration to the objections. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Dan. Um, can I ask um, Greg Barr-Jones? Yes, uh, good afternoon all, how are we? Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> um, in terms of uh, my input here, um, it is uh, very much in line with what Dan has uh, uh, talked about this morning. In particular, my concerns relate to the amount of non-compliances that have been granted based on merit. Um, and in my experience, um, this seems quite inconsistent with a lot of jobs that I've done in the past. And the non-compliances do actually have a huge impact on bulk and scale, which again flows onto the impact of this devastating view loss. And we've some, supplied some photos to the, the panel for review that's taken off the assessment report showing just how devastating the view losses are based on the photos that the council supplied us, um, which is clearly evident it is the case as opposed to what's um, been referred to in the assessment report. 
Um, and I guess um, in terms of trying to mitigate this, I, I think there's um, many other options that could be explored with a you know more skillful and and I guess considerate design for the neighbours, um, which is not uncommon in my um, practice, which I do with council on a regular basis. We often go back to assessors with alternate designs that have far less of an impact on the neighbours. Um, and again, in relation to the work that I've done previously, we've had jobs refused for far less impact than what this one is proposing um, in, in terms of the, you know, the, the view that's been, you know, destroyed by the proposal. So um, based on that, I think um, it's only um, fair that the panel reassess this um, this proposal and um, give it its uh, due diligence. Um, I'm sure Nicole's going to expand on exactly what um, the um, non-compliance is equate to, but from a design point of view, um, that's that's my input for the panel. Um, thank you very much, um, Greg. Thank you. Um, Nicole Lennon, you're, you're online? Yeah, there you are. Thanks. Thanks very thank much. You. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, my name's Nicole Lennon. I'm a town planner. I have 30 years experience and quite a lot of experience with um, view loss analysis. Um, I won't repeat um, anything that was in my submission that was sent through to the panel yesterday regarding issues with the officer's report. Um, I simply wanted to say uh, a few things, and that is that the latest amendments before the panel have been prepared to numerically comply with height and wall setbacks at the second floor level. The floor plate, however, of the second floor is not contracted in a way that would result in acceptable view sharing. I will not repeat the issues of the of, of what I sent through yesterday, um, and videos were also supplied which um, reveal the severe impact um, for views. I wanted to, to discuss how the proposal will not sit comfortably in the low density streetscape and where it raises privacy concerns. I'm going to refer to the view impact study that was prepared um, in relation to this application, so I don't know whether you have that um, on at hand or maybe you can just um, write down the pages that I refer to and maybe have a look later when you're deliberating. Um, there's no significant change or relief from the montage street view in the DA submission on page three from the montage street view on page eight of the amended sub submission. It's noted that the montage does not include the two levels of retaining structures and front fence, fence which adds to the elements of hard built form at the streetscape. The 3D bird's eye view reveals the open aspect to the north and supports our concerns for visual and acoustic privacy that were not raised in the officer's report. The proposal will not result in a built form that steps down the steps down Eltham Street as expected by the topography. And the ability of the receiving environment to accept number 26 and the proposal from a landscape sense um, is questioned. I note that on the landscape plan, you can see that the front setback in front of the building has no deep soil whatsoever. So there's very little that can be done at the front um, streetscape side of the building to absorb this third story. Finally, page 17 of the view impact study shows a flipped form. While I agree that an 85 square metre entertainment area, which includes the operable doors that can open out the, the internal room to the terrace. With this flip form in close proximity and looking straight into my client's site, I agree this is not a solution. Setting aside the huge terrace, which I maintain is unreasonable in itself, shifting and contracting the floor plate to the north has the potential to significantly improve the view sharing outcome for all parties. And I believe that this montage with the flip form shows you just how much of that view could be maintained if this um, floor plate on the second floor was juggled about. This is the outcome that we're seeking. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so the net, that is completes the objectors presenting. Um, now I have four speakers from the applicant. I'm not quite sure how you wish to to manage that. Um, often what happens is that 
one of the representatives of the applicants in effect acts as the ringmaster um, and there's a sequence that you wish to follow. So would you like to do that? And if so, who would like to take that role? Sure, thanks, David. It's Brett. Sorry, Natalie, do you want to go? I was going to say, I'm happy to introduce everyone first of all. I'm Natalie Nolan, the town planner. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, we have with us, obviously, Brett and Joanna, who are the owners of the property, and we have Nikki Moat, who is the architect. Um, I'll keep mine pretty short and then I'll introduce the others. And obviously, I'm here to answer any questions of the panel as well. Um, obviously, I've read the report in full and we are happy with the report and all the conditions of the consent. Um, we've worked hard with the council on this application and had a number of meetings to address the issues. Um, and we've also um, worked through a number of different options. And I think um, either Brett or Nikki or Joanna might go a bit through a bit more in terms of the reversing or flipping it over. Um, and it actually doesn't help the view issue at all. We, we, we continue to say that we provide view sharing in accordance with the principles of technologies. Um, and that's what's been um, assessed in the report. So it's about, we, we say it's about view sharing, not just view retention for one or two people. So we believe that we've done that by working through the council and that's um, that's agreed within the report. So um, I don't know, Brett or Nikki, who wants, or Joanna wants to go next. Um, maybe Joanna and Brett, do you want to just yeah, go sure. through what you've done so far? And obviously we're here for questions and come back and I can help them out as required. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I guess I'll just be really quick. Um, I guess just to give some context, we're planning um, this build to address the immediate needs of our growing family, um, to enable our son and daughter to have separate bedrooms, um, and I guess to accommodate changes in our living environment from the pandemic, where I now work from home, Brett works from home for part of the week. We've now spent years um, in the design process, really trying to find ways to minimise the impacts. Um, we've worked with council over the last six months to get to this point where we are today, right now. Um, we've worked tirelessly with Nikki, um, our architect, to come up with compromises to build, to deal with the issues uh, raised by council to get to this design, um, of course, um, you can see in the report what those changes are, but I guess just as a summary, you know, we've reduced the overall height with the proposal in full compliance with the council's maximum height control. We've increased the setback to the su southern side boundary. We've increased the front setback to the second floor balcony. We've created a rear extension to the second floor uh, sitting room and barbecue areas cantilevered over the existing roof. Um, we... Um, believe the report by council addresses all of the concerns raised. Um, uh, we're happy uh, to comply with the conditions in the report um, and essentially we believe that this build and all of the compromises that we've made along the way uh, really embodies uh, view sharing. So that's all from me. So anyone else from the applicants team that wish to speak? Nikki, did you want to say anything further? About uh, yeah, sure. I I mean, um, Joanna's kind of covered everything that we've um, been through in terms of working with council and the changes that we've made through that process to um, to address the key issues of non-compliant height and view sharing. Um, we have reduced the height by 400 millimetres to, to achieve full compliance. Um, and that was a significant improvement to the view impact number 10 of the view of Bilgola headland and horizon views. Um, and we've also looked at addressing the bulk and scale issues with increased setbacks um, and increased um, front setback to the balcony um, and actually cantilevering that some of that mass over the rear portion to try and reduce some of the mass at the front where, where it impacted the view. Um, so uh, we, we acknowledge that council have provided a detailed report on all these changes and um, and um, we we believe that we have improved the view sharing through that part of that process. Okay, thank you. I'd like to add, sorry, um, David, is that yes. um, we had, um, Nikki has prepared a very detailed um, 
view impact study. I'm, I'm not sure whether it's been forwarded to the panel. I know that it was submitted to Adam Richardson, which shows a number of different options um, and it was a really good view. And if you need that, we can forward that through. That we and have had access to it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and just in terms of the um, things like the non-compliance with the wall height controls of DCP and based on the fact that it's a, we're, you know, the non-compliance is a result of previous excavation on site. Um, the actual height that's measured, you won't really see because it, it is actually, you know, in a previous excavation for the, the lower level. Um, but yeah, generally here just for any questions of the panel. Okay, thank you. Panel members, any questions or points of clarification you wish to make of any of the speakers? Um, if I may, David, uh, yes. start. Um, I just wanted to ask um, um, the perhaps perhaps uh, Nikki, the the architect, um, how would you respond to the, the suggestion by uh, Nicole Lennon, the uh, uh, one of the objectors, uh, objectors uh, to the idea of uh, shifting the floor plates slightly further towards the north. So we did, we have seen your um, your report and studied that, you know, and looked at at the uh, the option that you proposed, which was to flip the plan. But what she was suggesting is that rather than flipping it, you would shift it over more towards the north. How do you uh, respond to that? Look, look, we did we did look at it. Um, it it compromised the, the layout, but I'm sure we could make it work. But we didn't pursue it because it really um, didn't make any um, improvement to the loss of the lag the lagoon view. The, the lagoon view is, seems to be the most important thing here, and it didn't improve that at all. Um, it gave slightly more district view around it, but 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 didn't improve the lagoon view for the compromised floor plate. Right. So I yes. So I imagine the uh, by shifting the, the wall of the upper level, the, the, uh, the southern wall of the upper level further north, you're opening up the, the view, you're making it wider. But as you say, there are parts of the view that will remain uh, obstructed. Yeah, it's just the yes. It's not the, there's no lagoon view that would be benefited from that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And can I just uh, throw in the, because there are lots of considerations that we went through with all of this um but but one of the things was we have an issue with the stair you know stairs can only be in certain positions so that was a restricting element as well um mm -hmm. so i just thought i'd throw that in okay thank you david have you got any uh, other questions while we're uh, no that's oh, all okay heather, heather or andrew no um, yes uh could i just yeah. ask the objectors thanks um david um about their view analysis uh, my understanding is from reading the documentation we've been provided that um, the building has been dropped and now that the view, um, for example, of the uh, towards the Bill Gola headland, I think that's the right word, um, is still remains, still remains. But I saw this up the extra information that the objectors provided and it shows that it's still all blocked out. So I was just wondering wondering how the objectors came up with their view analysis and is it based on the current plans and was it based on analysis of the height pole um, that was erected for the um, erected for the purposes of considering view loss? I'm just wondering, I, I'm Nicole Lennon, but the um, those plans that we sent through yesterday were prepared by Greg. Um, my understanding is that we could only go by the poles that were there, but we have dropped the the blocking out of the view um, with a bit of guesswork, understanding that those poles are there representing the original DA and not, not what is currently before the panel. So we've done the best we can um, to show what the impact will be today. So your so the those diagrams um, were based on the pole, uh, they, and you extrapolated what you thought the reduction would be. Yes, because there's some some reduction to the east okay. with the pulling back of the um, the, the the bedroom the the paneling of the balustrade, and there's um, a, the drop of four hundred millimeters. Okay, just to just to paraphrase, you have done your what you believe is your best to 
take into account the what is now the current plan, current proposal for the site? Yes, that's right. Okay, yeah, thank you. Hence, hence supply. I mean, hence supplying. I guess the supporting video because the the problem with the with the photographs as well. They actually, depending on what you take them with, it can stretch it out and it actually doesn't give you a decent visual representation. Videos probably do more so. And I just wanted yeah. to also add. Um, oh, just oh, I'm with, sorry, Dan. Oh. Look, uh, unless there's a question going to you, I I can't allow sort of a a more open discussion. I appreciate you might have a point to make. Unless one of the panel members wants to, yeah, you know, there's got a question that's directed to you. Uh, no, Heather, no, not you more no, you wish to say? Not no? necessarily. I mean, Nicole's answered my question really, like, which was how was the um, the view loss generated that we saw in the photos? So mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, David, you you no more questions? David? No, not from me. Thank uh, you. And, and Andrew, you indicated you didn't have any earlier. No I don't have any, but can I um, thank uh, everyone and for the submissions you you provided. Um, the the depth in those has been really really helpful helpful to us, both the photographs and and also the um, the video presentation in description. We really appreciate the effort. Um, you're going to you now quite clearly. We've got to make an independent assessment, so. Um, but in making that assessment, the, the best information we can obtain both from the applicant and objectors puts us in a better position to to make you know what we believe is the, the best decision possible. So once again, can I thank you all for your presentations? And I would now like to move on to item 4.2 if I could. Um, you can log off if you wish. Thank you. Um, item 4.2. It relates to, um, just bear with me a second here, just bring my agenda back up, um, relates to uh, DA 2023-0045-36 Bardo Road, Newport. I don't have any objectors or applicants registered to speak. Am I correct, um, Heidi? You don't have any additional ones? Yes, no one registered okay. to speak. Okay, that being the case, we'll move on to the next item, which is item 4.3. Um, item 4.3 is DA 2022-1905, 40, uh, 48 um, McTeer Street, Narrabeen, construction of a secondary dwelling. I don't have any objectors or an applicant registered to speak. Is that still the case, Heidi? That is correct. Um, thank you very much. Um, that is the they're the final items in the um, the public component of this meeting. So I'd now like to close um, the public component and thank you all for your attendance. Um, Heidi, you can cease recording if you wish.